Welcome to Bariatric Yoga. I'm Tracy, and we're going to get started. If you're here in the studio, um, welcome. And if you're at home, just grab your mat. We're going to begin in easy seat. So make your way down to your mat if you're not there already. And oh, I had music, but we'll go without it this evening. And um, in easy seat, that can look crisscross applesauce, or if that's not comfortable for you, you can get your legs right out in front of you. But what we do wanna do is make sure that we move any cushion kind of out of the way to try to get our sit bones as close to mother earth as possible. So moving any cushion out of the way and then just beginning to send the spine as tall as we can get it, taking the crown of the head up high to the sky, putting a nice little smile on the face. And I normally touch base with Amy before preparing a flow to try to tie in what's gonna happen after yoga I was struggling a little bit. And she said, girl, just go with whatever feels good. So I have been practicing a flow that incorporates um, a mudra. And I would like to introduce that for our flow today. So a mudra is taking an outward expression with our hands that is um, taking something that we're feeling sort of stirring in our souls and bringing it out. So we're gonna to practice today uh, the Lotus Mudra. So join me by, we'll join our pinky fingers together and then just sort of roll the palms of the hands together and then our thumbs will come to touch and our fingers will be nice and open and the palms will be nice and open. So we're mimicking the Lotus flower. We're just gonna bring that right here to our heart's center to begin our practice. Practice, practice, practice. If you've been with me for any of my yoga sessions, practice is my favorite part of yoga. So as we begin to come into our moment here, just centering this beautiful lotus flower right here, perhaps gently closing off the eyes or finding a nice gentle gaze down. As you begin to focus in on the breath, on the inhales, sending the spine nice and tall, the crown of the head high to the sky. And on the exhales, just deepening that seat, maybe even sitting back a little bit. We're gonna introduce a breathing practice that's called the three-part breath. And I'll explain it before we start this. The three-part breath breaks up the breath, as you can probably guess, into three parts. So on the inhale, we'll take in just a third of the breath down into the very lowest part of the belly, up to the belly button, almost visualizing it coming into the body, up to the belly button, and we'll pause just for a second and then continuing to take in the next two thirds of the breath up through the heart space. And then finishing out all of the inhale of the breath up to the very crown of the head, and then we'll pause there, almost to the point of it being uncomfortable. Like I need to take, I need to exhale this breath. And when you get to that point, you'll exhale everything out and then return to your natural breath for one round. And then take a big deep breath in, and then you practice the same thing on the exhale, exhaling out a third of the breath, starting at the very bottom, and then another half third of the breath, and so on, I'll walk us through it. So it's gently closing off the eyes, and your hands might begin to feel a little uncomfortable in this lotus mudra. If you need to wiggle them around, roll out the wrists, just gently return to the mudra whenever you can. Taking your first intentional breath. It's a practice, yogis. So know that there's no judgment in practice. We're learning and practicing together. So inhale. 
just a third of your breath to the top of your belly button. Two thirds of the breath up through to the heart space. And then all of the rest of your big inhale all the way to the crown of the head and holding it there. And it's different for everyone. As soon as it gets to be uncomfortable for you, a big exhale out. And then maybe even just, to, to, just return to your natural breath and then take a glance at your mudra. Now we'll take a big deep breath in. Now we'll exhale out just a third of the breath, starting at the very bottom, picturing exhaling the breath out from the body down below, exhaling out to the belly button, and then out through the heart space, and then exhaling out all the way from the top of the head. Emptying out everything in the body. And then holding there at the bottom. And then a big inhale as soon as it gets to be a little uncomfortable. And then returning to your natural breath. And then a gentle look at your flower. And returning to your natural breath, if you would like to continue practicing that three-part breath, as I tell this quick story about the lotus flower. So as I stay in this mudra, I find that my fingers begin to shake and I have to close my flower off. The lotus mudra, the lotus flower, is famous for its beauty, its huge petals, and for the fact that it grows through some very murky waters, some very thick mud on occasion. Sometimes it grows in very clear waters. But the beautiful thing about the lotus flower, minus the things I just described, is that every single night, it closes itself back up, goes back down into sometimes some very deep, dark, muddy water. And then it rises again to bloom the next day. And I love this mudra and I have fallen in love with this idea because it has really been a rough few years. When I think about 2020, 2021, entering into 2022, I've attached myself to this mudra, this internal inside my soul idea that I can close myself off and especially in my breath, and then I can bloom again. So as we practice today, we'll come back to this mudra very often. And I would love for you to also to attach to this mudra when we're here, knowing that no matter how dark, how deep, how muddy the waters may be, we can bloom through that. So let's return to that breath one more time, shall we? Closing off the eyes or finding a gentle gaze down below. A drishti is what we call it. And we'll practice with the inhale breath. So a third of your breath from deep down in your sits bones, taking a third of the breath to the belly button. And then two thirds of the breath up through the heart space. And then all of your breath up through the crown of the head and holding it there until just the point of it being uncomfortable. And a big exhale. And with that, close off your flower and bring your fingertips down to your mat, sitting up nice and tall. Smile on the face, maybe wiggle out those fingertips, roll out the wrists, holding that mudra can be difficult, but so beautiful at the same time. We're gonna bring some movement into our flow today by coming into table. So just round yourself around on the mat, bringing your hands underneath, 
your shoulders and we'll place the hips above the knees. And the gaze will be gently in between the thumbs and the fingers. Okay, take a big deep inhale in through the belly, feeling everything expand. And exhale. And then take the knees wide on the mat. Take the left foot to cross over the right foot and then push back into child's pose. So send the hips back to meet the heels and then stretch the arms long on the mat. There are several variations that can be taken here. So if this is in any way uncomfortable for your body, you can bring the arms to the sides you can bring the knees in together to touch. I have cued a wide-legged child's pose, but my cueing is only suggestive. So whatever's comfortable for your body, allowing the head to come down to the mat, allowing your third eye, Aja, to meet the mat and just holding here for a moment. Perhaps even thinking about some murky waters, some tough times. And now taking your hands and walking them over towards the right side of your mat, feeling a nice side body stretch on the left side. Breathing into the stretch, feeling the chest open on the inhale. Walking the hands back to center. And then over towards the left side of your mat. Getting a nice side body stretch on the opposite side. No judgment. If you catch yourself on the wrong side, there is no such thing. As long as we are doing to one side what we do to the other. And walking the hands back to center. Take one big relaxing breath. Full round of breath. Just letting everything go that you might have brought with you today to this practice. Fully coming into the moment and then rise like the lotus flower into table. And we're gonna take the right hand up high to the sky for thread the needle. So the right hand is up high, and then we're going to, on the exhale breath, slip it through this beautiful bowl we've created, bringing the shoulder down to the mat. And inhale, bring that right hand back up high to the sky, and exhale, thread the needle again. Inhale, bring that right hand back up to the sky and thread your needle one more time. Inhale, return your palm to the mat. And now for the other side. So inhale the opposite arm up high to the sky. And on the exhale, thread the needle. Inhale, bring the arm back up high to the sky. Beautiful shoulder stretch, shoulder opener. Exhale, thread the needle. Inhale, bring that arm back up high to the sky. One last time, thread that needle.
Inhale, return the palm back to table. And finding your center balance, we're gonna test our balance with some bird dogs. So there are several variations for bird dog. You do whatever makes you comfortable. The full extended version of bird dog is to take the opposite hand and arm and to reach them forward. The variations would be for you, for you and your own body to decide whether to bloom and just lift one leg or to just lift one arm. So I'm going to cue lifting both, but please do whatever is good for you. So my gaze is down in between my thumb and fingers, my dristy. I'm tucking my belly button into my spine to create an energy lock in the body for balance. I'm going to keep my hips nice and parallel to the earth. And I'm going to lift my right arm and my left leg on an inhale. So lifting the right arm and left leg on an inhale, reaching and stretching long. It helps sometimes with balance to point the toe down towards the earth. And just holding here for just a round of breath. Please return to the earth whenever you need. And exhale, returning back down to the ground. Rest for one round of breath. And now extending the opposite hand and opposite foot. So on an inhale, we'll reach long the left arm and right leg, keeping the hips nice and parallel to the ground. One more round of breath, lifting high if you can. Girls look amazing. And then returning back down to the earth. Awesome, we'll do one more round on both sides. Inhale, lift and stretch for bird dog. One round of breath. Inhale, push, push and pull. And exhale, lower back down. Center yourself and on the opposite side. Inhale, lift, stretch. Reaching for both opposite ends of the room. One round of breath. Inhale, one more round. And on an exhale, lower back down to the Awesome. Returning to our easy seat. We're gonna create a figure four stretch. So I'm gonna send my right leg long on the mat. You can start with whichever leg you like. We're gently gonna twist the body and just gently fingertip walk down the leg. Wherever I feel a little resistance, just gonna pause, just like the lotus flower. Pause for a moment, take a big deep breath in, sending some vital oxygen. And on my exhale, I'm gonna see if maybe I can deepen the stretch by maybe just 1%, maybe two. Inhale again, sending some oxygen and also growing tall with the spine. And on the exhale, see if I can deepen the stretch just a little bit, maybe one or two more percent. And yogis, those percents add up. The next thing I know, I've increased my stretch by 5%. And when you're ready, gently walk your hands back up to center. 
and switch legs to the other side. <clears throat> and please always make adjustments where you need. I say that because I have to make one on this side for my own self. I have a right knee issue, so I can't fully bring my leg in. So always adjust as you see fit. So taking a slight twist over to the left, I'm gonna inhale and go tall with the spine, and then just a gentle tippy toe walk down the leg until I feel that resistance and pause. Inhale to grow tall with the spine. And on the exhale, deepen that stretch just 2%. Awesome. Inhale one more time. Can we get one more percent? Yes. Yes. One more round of breath. And just gently walk yourself back up to a neutral position. Let's bring the soles of our feet together for butterfly. We'll just wiggle them around a little bit. We'll send our fingertips long to the earth. Inhale the arms high to the sky and see if you can come to that lotus mudra up at the top, bringing the pinkies and the thumbs to touch. And now this requires core strength. So there are options here. You can return the arms back down to the ground and walk yourself forward. Or if you're feeling a little froggy, as my friend Tessa would say, try to head to the forward stretch, a forward fold while staying in your Lotus Mudra. This We've added a lot of weight to our stretch. So please be mindful that just a gentle walk down, you're not as top heavy. If you're remaining in Lotus Mudra, you're creating an added weight to that stretch. So using that core strength and just being mindful of that stretch and holding there and just returning back to neutral when you are ready. This is much more of an upper body stretch than if you were not in the mudra. And then returning back to neutral whenever you're ready. Awesome. And now we're gonna swing the legs to whichever side because we're all on opposite sides. So it doesn't matter. We're going to come to our side. We're going to do some clams. Murky waters made me think of clams. So clams um, look like this. The knees kind of stay to the ground and the toes come to rise. And then the knee just opens up. And then it closes back down. And so it's an inhale breath to open and an exhale breath to close. Inhale to open and exhale to close. And you can do these at your own pace. Some people really enjoy this and really like to pick up the pace. The importance, if you do decide you wanna speed up is tucking the belly button into the spine and maintaining that balance. An added challenge is to not have anything holding your balance. I like to keep my hand here, especially if I'm instructing so that I don't tip over while I'm clamming. Don't forget to breathe. 
You'll feel this one tomorrow, I promise. We'll do three more. Awesome, two and last one. And then send the legs straight out. Now we're just gonna do some leg lifts. So lifting your whatever leg is on top, straight up as high as you can go, and gently lowering it back down. And now flex the foot and lift it up high to the sky and lowering it back down. One more time. Okay, and now to add a version to that, our fallen tree. So we're gonna bring the leg, bending the knee all the way up so that we're in a tree pose, but the tree pose, we've fallen down. So this is fallen tree. And then we take it up high to the sky. Flex and then bring it back down sliding the foot up the leg for tree pose, and then sending the leg high to the sky with a flex, and then gently lowering it back down. Beautiful. Up the leg for tree pose, and then up high to the sky, gently lowering back down. Beautiful. One more time. Up the leg for tree pose, up high to the sky and lowering back down. Beautiful. Now rolling onto our bellies for some supermans. These are also called a lotus pose. Several variations. The most difficult I'll demonstrate first and then show you some um, versions that are not as challenging. So we'll start, I take my right cheek to the mat first. And to lift up all four limbs is the most challenging of this pose. <coughs> Different versions would of course just gently to be lifting one arm, two arms, or to just lift the feet. So whatever's comfortable for you. We'll start with the right cheek down on the mat. Just relax here for a second. Notice how the body feels right now. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift up into Superman, or it's also called Lotus. And hold for one round of breath. And lower back down, take the left cheek to the mat. Inhale to prepare and exhale, lift up. This is a super strengthening back pose. Your back muscles, lower back muscles most especially. Exhale, lower back down, right cheek to the mat. These are great for any time that you're just laying around. Rest just for a second. Check in with your body. Where are you feeling this stretch? Inhale to prepare for the stretch. And on the exhale, lift up, push everything out. So that the torso ideally is your ultimate as you practice this asana, this pose. The torso is the only thing left on the ground. And lowering back down, left cheek to the mat. Gently slide your hands back by your side. Tuck your toes under and push yourself up into downward dog. However you get there, you might hit table first, you might walk yourself there. Tuck your toes under and you're gonna send your hips high to the sky, bringing the head in between the elbows. There can be as generous of a bend in the knee as you need. 
and there's no need for the, for the heels to touch the mat. If we do, that's great. And we're gonna do a crouching dog. So gently just lowering the knees down to the mat and just sort of hovering them there for a second. Not touching the ground and then pushing back up into downward dog. Awesome. And one more time, gently lowering the knees down for crouching dog and then pushing back up into downward dog. We'll do that one more time. Lowering the knees down, just hovering just above, and then pushing the hips back up for downward dog. And then when you're ready, walk the feet to meet the hands. Just hang out in a beautiful forward fold. Generous bend in the knee, knees. And let it go, let it go, yogis. Let your hair hang out. If you don't have any hair, that's fine too. Let your scalp hang out. Move around here, that might feel good. Crisscrossing the arms sometimes adds a little weight. And then we'll come to a halfway lift. Just gently placing the hands on the shins and the crown of the head comes forward so the spine is parallel to the ground. And then on the exhale, come back down into your forward fold and then root to rise, coming all the way up. We'll gather up all this beautiful energy in the room. Hands will come high to the sky. And guess what mudra we're gonna find at the top? The Lotus Mudra. See if you can get those pinkies to touch and the thumbs to gather together. And holding here. Bring the Lotus Mudra to your heart center. And then forward fold all the way back down to the We'll do two more rounds of that sun sal, half sun salutation. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Roots arise. Gather up all this beautiful energy in the room and meet in your lotus mudra at the top. This beautiful flower. Gently centered in your heart space, knowing that you are rising through troubles, muddy waters, anything that comes your way. Big, deep round of breath with gratitude here. And on your exhale, beautiful swan dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise. Last one, gathering everything up. Lotus mudra at the top. Beautiful petals opening up and then centering at your heart space. Holding here for just a big round of breath with gratitude. allowing the hands to fall to the sides, widening the feet on the mat. It might turn sideways on the mat. I'm gonna come to a wide-legged stance. Inhale, arms come high, lotus mudra again. Exhale, forward fold, wide-legged forward fold. This should feel a little different in the hamstrings. So hanging out here for just a second, a bend in the knees if that's necessary. 
a block. If you have one of those handy, if you want to bring the floor up a little. When you're ready, we're going to walk our hands to the right and sort of rotate. We are going to rotate the foot, both feet, so that they're facing forward. Toes pointing forward, fingers pointing forward. We're framing the left foot or the right foot. It doesn't matter. In a low lunge, finding our balance, we're going to maybe I'm going to have to bring my back foot in just a tippy toe or two for high lunge. I'm going to lift up into high lunge. This requires balance, so I fall all the time. And then rotating the back foot. Dropping the arms for warrior two. So now the front foot should be pointing forward. The back foot at 90 degrees. The hips should be parallel to your mat and to your arms. Let the shoulders fall away from the ears. And they should be light and airy. This is a power posture. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Hold here for just a moment. And then rotate the feet, coming back into your forward fold. Inhale your arms high for that lotus mudra again. And then when you're ready, a beautiful forward fold. Swan diving back into the muddy waters. Feeling that beautiful stretch. Back behind the hamstrings. Big round of breath. And then walking your hands to whichever foot you did not choose to walk them to to start. So for me, that's going to be my right foot. I'm going to rotate the toes so that they'll be they'll be pointing forward, and the fingertips are also pointing forward for a low lunge. In your low lunge, I should have pointed this out on the other side. You can move around here in a low lunge and get different stretches. When you're ready, I tiptoe in my back foot a little bit for some more balance. Rise up into your high lunge. also known as warrior one, Virabhadrasana. Getting ready for warrior two, rotate your back foot to 90 degrees. And that will automatically open up your hips. You can drop the arms down for warrior two. Beautiful. So your front, your front foot is facing forward. Your hips are parallel to your mat. There's a gentle bend in the front knee. And a smile on your face. Or not. <laughs> and when you're ready, point the toes forward, take the bend out of the knee. Inhale the arms high for that lotus mudra. Exhale, forward fold, swan dive back into those waters. Put a bend in the knee and come down to the ground however you want to get there. You can just fall backwards onto the bottom, gently put the hands behind you, come to the knees. 
let's go ahead and take it to the back. So let's go ahead and roll down to the back. Sometimes I like to get there by placing my hands behind my knees and just gently rolling the vertebrae one vertebra at a time to get there. Having a bend in the knees, let's send the right leg high to the sky and then cross it over the left. Lifting up the leg, your left leg, so that it's parallel to the ground. Cactusing out the arms or bringing them to a T, depending on how much space you have. Covering the legs here, you can feel the strength that's necessary in the core. And then gently let the legs just fall over to the left. For a supine twist. And relax into this asana, this stretch. A little deeper stretch can occur if you'd like to lift the head and take a peek over to the right or the opposite direction of your knees. Big round of breath here. Really twisting out all the spinal fluid, getting it moving. Turning the knees back to center, bringing both feet back to meet the mat. Send the left leg high to the sky. Cross it over and then lift. 